All right, so this week we have uh, Canboard. This week for our integration discussion, we have getting into advanced customization. I think specifically we're going to talk about automatic actions and recurring tasks. Yeah, yeah. So I was actually just looking at the book stack notes, and we got a lot on there. I, Yeah, I think I'm most excited to get in the concepts more than anything because uh, I think it is hard to explain the uh setting up reoccurrence i think more of a why for what we're going to go over but i'm excited uh to talk about recurring tasks and automated actions that's the word i was looking for earlier yeah i i didn't know whether to call it reoccurring or recurring like i i don't know the difference so so the two are kind of like interspersed all throughout the documentation here I'm going to use them as, as the same word. Interchangeable. Words. Sure. It, so, so if, if I get it wrong, please give me some, give me some leeway here and, and let me know later. <laughs> to start off with, I, I wanted to, to broach the concept, giving some real world examples. So what's going on here? Well, we think about things like uh, laundry, team meetings, or, or, or even workouts. All of these things and, and many more happen over and over again on a predictable schedule. And unlike habits, like drinking water every day, it's preferable to get reminders about these type of things. But I don't want them to clutter up my board until it's actually time to do them. So now what? And and that's kind of the question I want to answer with this documentation is, is the, all right, now what? I, I know these things are going to be happening over and over again. I don't want them to clutter up my board. I definitely don't want to create new ones once a week for like laundry or workouts. What do we do about it? Well, there, as the title says, are reoccurring tasks and automated actions in Canboard. So I'm going to, I'm going to touch on reoccurring tasks first. And of course, I'm going to link you directly to the Canboard documentation. Nothing's yep. going to beat that. Just to go over real quickly what the reoccurring tasks have, on every task detail page, you can choose to edit the reoccurrence. So if we if we take a look at the edit recurrence page, uh, it, it gives us a, a couple of options. One of the main ones is going to be the trigger. 90% of the time, this is going to be when the task is moved to the last column. Uh, Jack and I obviously have sure. gone over, have done as the, the final column. So we basically take a, a task, move it from left to right. When it's in the far right column, it's quote unquote done. And then at that point is when my recurrent task would trigger 90% of the time, like I said. There are also other instances like trigger something when it moves from the first column or trigger it when the actual task is closed. Now, I can understand triggering something when the, the task itself is closed. But we're triggering specifically a recurrence when the task moves from the first column is interesting to me because I, I don't necessarily know that I see a use case for that or have been able to to come up with one. So Jack, I was wondering if, you know, what would you what would you think about if I said, you know, I I want to take this thing and immediately have a new one populate as soon as I move it out of the first column. As soon as I take it and actually do something with it, I want a brand new one populate. Uh, that that's ready for me to work as well. Uh, that's a good question. I I can't think of anything right now off the top of my head only because it doesn't seem very Kanban ish to have something generate after it's moved out of that first column. You'd want, you'd want it to be done before you regenerate the next one. Cause Kanban would track stock of things, right? And, and that's initially what it was used for. It was, it was sure. used as a, a card type system to, to track, all right, we're getting low on these types of cards, so we, we need to order the more of these types of material because that's what those cards represent. And then as a the material comes in, they they add more of the card representation to the to the workflow. Now, I could see something like order fulfillment using this and, and you have a, a templated order ticket or, or, or task where you you would grab it, move it into you know the the next column and fill out all the details of the customer. And then immediately a brand new one of that same template would be generated yeah. for you to use in the event of a, another customer. Uh, that's that's gonna be for a lot of physical good things and 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 that would 
be a good way to to deal with templates as a as a workflow kind of thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe not so much. Honestly, honestly, templates aren't aren't a bad way to go about it. I I think most of my recurring tasks tend to end up fairly cyclic in the sense that once they're done, I'm ready for a new one. The to, next one. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready for the next one. Um, whereas, you know, if you have a variable length of things, but you can always take another order for something, you always want to have that template available for just you. ready for you. Right. So that was my thought on that. But like I said, for, for at least our use case, 90% of the time, it's going to be when the task is actually moved to the last column. Um, now, one of, one of the things is if you move it to the last column and then move it back and then move it to the last column again, it's not going to trigger twice. Uh, it keeps track of the parent task state. So it, it knows that this task has already generated a recurring task. So we're not going to generate another one. I've run into that a couple times and, and had to scratch my head because I couldn't really remember how that worked. Then I had to go back and find the child task, but it does not generate a new one if that's a second time putting it into that done column. Another section on that edit recurrence screen is the factor and timeline box. Uh, and that is to calculate at what point is a recurrence going to happen. Uh, specifically for the due date. So this will set like when the due date is for that task, which if we think about it in orders being taken, doesn't make much sense. But if we think of it as, you know, a weekly task that makes absolute sense. So what it would do is it would calculate either in days, months, or years, the number of those that you would want your due date to be extended by. And then that base date next to it, would give you uh, how to calculate the new due date. Is it from the time that you put it into the last column or is it from the existing due date? And, and there are a couple right. of reasons why you would, you would go one or the other. For instance, if it's going to be like laundry or, or garbage, right? And, and the time it needs to get done is based off of when it was last done, uh, then you're going to calculate the due date from when it's moved into the last column. Because if I go on vacation for three weeks, I don't want to move it and then have immediately a task due two weeks ago because it was calculated based on the last right, due date. Right. I just did the garbage. I don't need to do it for another week. So set the due date for next week. Uh, but if it's like a scheduled meeting or a, a workout, we want to keep that date pegged by calculating from the existing due date. Uh, so that will give us a, a stable uh, even if I forget like a day to move the, the task to done after I work out, it's not going to throw off my entire schedule. It's based off that previous task, right? You're not straining it out of water, basically. So so if we have these this concept of, of a recurring task, one of the things I've found is is how do I put stuff that repeats on an odd or, or, or different cadence? What I wanted to do is is to to have something that recurred uh, the Monday and Friday of the first week and the Wednesday of the second week on a cycle, right? And, and so if I think about it, if, if I take like, in this case, it was actually a, a workout schedule. If I take a workout, let's call it workout A on Monday and Friday, and then next week, because I have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday cycle, and I take the B cadence workout on Wednesday the first week and then Monday and Friday the second week, I'm getting that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, ABA, and then the second week is BAB, right? So, so you're getting a, a rotation to your workouts that is, is cyclical, but you can't specify every Monday and Friday on alternating weeks. It sure. just doesn't look like that. Um, so what I was able to come up with is to, to have, to, to, I was able to find the cycle that the task repeats at, which in this case is every two weeks and make one that recurs at that interval at each of the start dates in between the first and last occurrence. So if I take, if I take that first week, Monday and Friday start point and the second week, Wednesday start point, by the time the next Monday rolls around in week three and I have a two week recurrent task, that first Monday's task is now due. And then the end of that week, the Friday's task is due and so on and so forth. So what ends up being three tasks with 
the same recurrence but different start dates actually looks to me, for all intents and purposes, like the same task on that repeatable schedule. That's clear as mud, right? So you have six tasks across two weeks, right? And they're on a repeatable schedule. Correct. So, okay. I just wanted to clear that up. So it's it's three tasks in week one and then three tasks in week two. And you have those occurring on a two-week interval? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you were explaining this one to me uh, before, and I was still trying to wrap my head around how, how this automation was working and how you got this to work. But now it's all coming together. Yeah, that's that's when I twisted my ankle and I had some downtime to figure out what I wanted to do. <laughs> How do I want to get these right? How do I want to get these uh, yeah, exactly. automations right? And I was like, well, I know the schedule I want to do. I want to do a three-week workout cadence with uh, ABAB workouts. And it, it is almost tricking it into saying, hey, this is the Monday and this is this is the Monday task and this is the Friday task, but to me, I put the same description, I put the same title, I sure. put the, you know, yeah, everything's everything's the same. I'm kind of tricking myself. It looks like the same to me, so it works works out just fine. Looks like it's someone on some crazy odd, you know, interval type thing, type uh, task recurrence, but really, it's just no. This yeah. happens once every two weeks. So that being the case, right? I obviously want to not have to create those all the time and and that that helps for the recurrence but when they recur they start off in the far left of your board system at whatever swim lane they were in before that doesn't help me at all if i'm monitoring the you know one of one of the middle columns one of the one of the in execution columns so i need something to move that there for me because i am just too darn lazy to do that myself Automated actions uh, are where I go in order to fulfill that. Automated actions, I, I, I wrote down here that this could be a potentially large section uh, just for the sheer amount of examples uh, that they have. I'm going to hop over to their official documentation and go through that uh, as far as, as establishing a baseline. And then I can put some, some use cases that we have behind the theory. They write, to minimize user interaction, Canboard supports automated actions. Each automated action is defined with these properties, an event to listen, the action linked to the event, and any additional parameters. Each project has a different set of automated actions. All the automatic actions are, are a combination of the action, the event, and any additional parameters for that specific combination. They have some available actions listed here. Uh, they have, let's see, automatic, automatically assigned a category based on the color of the task. Change the assignee based on a username. Change the color of the task when using a specific task link like blocked or is blocked by. Close the task. Move the task to another project. Open a task or automatically update the start date. So there are just a plethora of things here that you can do. I, I, I find this to be probably the most powerful tool that Canboard offers, even a little bit better than search, if I'm being honest. And I, I've been very impressed with some of the examples even that they have. We specifically use uh, heavily different ways to, to move tasks around. We do do some of the color things, and that's, that's kind of fun just to make sure everything's the same. But there, there are two main things, I think, that benefit us more than anything. So the first one is that all recurring tasks are moved out of the backlog to pending until their due date and then are put into work in progress. So there's there's a couple of actions there. When we were talking about all reoccurring tasks start off in the far left, in our case, in, in the backlog of the board that they're on. So we can target all of the tasks in the backlog and put them independent if they have a due date within 14 days. 
and and that's the that's the rule that we have set up as uh jack uh, you've doubtless seen all the all the tasks for our meetings are impending before they get thrown into work in progress right. and that happens automatically so on the day that we are having our meetings they are in work in progress ready for us to take notes in and reference and and whatnot um, and, and that happens because we have that automated action to not only put it into pending, but we also have an automatic action to the day that it's due, put it into work in progress. Um, and I actually have two tasks for that, too, just because of the workflow that, that we're talking about. So our workflow, obviously, is to keep things in, in pending if it has a specific due date. If it's not something I can do right now, it's something I have to wait for a date to occur. Right. I, I throw it in our, our pending column. And obviously, that's why on the date it was due, I wouldn't want to move it over to my work in progress column because I don't ignore my work in progress column. I do have a habit of ignoring my pending column. Uh, the other column, however, that I also touch on is the planning column or the, the planned column. And that is the one right before work in progress. And if there's a task in there that has a due date, it's probably because I have to do something before that date. That's usually why stuff is in the plan column. So if that due date comes around and I still haven't put it in work in progress, it will toss it in work in progress to make sure that I can go see it and say, hey, this due date, by the way, is tomorrow, so you might want to take a look at it. So there are there are two ways there that we indicate to ourselves whether a task is, is important, it has a due date, and throw it into work in progress for us. Yeah, that pending one is very useful, especially we have a ton of automation around those maintenance tests that we have, um, especially for the show. It's like, we're going to get ready to record one. It's like, well, it doesn't happen until this date. So we're going to do this. But my favorite is that it's almost as if the whole thing is automated. So when it moves from uh, work in progress or usually it's just work in progress to done to, to the last column, we have another one automatically created and pending with the due date set out two weeks from from the existing due date right right so basically rather than having to go through and create all these tasks and move them all around it's done for us so we have we have it created for us we get that pending it goes back it you know when it's hey it's shows coming up this week it'll automatically move itself to planned or work in progress and say hey this is you know coming up this week and it's just almost like a perfect cycle there it really is yeah. we really don't have to do much except move it from work in progress to done yeah yeah uh with with any notes or whatever we need to work on it with and it's it's just it's fluid right it's it's automated it's everything that i never want to have to deal with uh and, the, and then the last one i did touch on but tasks in the done column stay open for 20 days and then close themselves um then this is fairly straightforward yeah. um now, for us, we let the tasks hang out in the done column for 20 days and then have them close themselves because we don't want them cluttering up our done column after they become irrelevant. Since we have review meetings every two weeks, this gives us that time frame plus a little leeway in case we get delayed. Uh, also, the, the default search right ignores all closed tasks, so once they do get closed, we don't see them again. So the rationale there is we don't want to see them if they're irrelevant. And that handles that. Most of us. the time they are. Once they hit that done, and, you know, they've been sitting out 20 days. We've already reviewed them. We, we've we already reviewed them and we're, we're, we're done with them. Right? And as we were talking about in the previous episode, I mean, if we need to go back and, and look them up, we can absolutely do that through a search. It's right? there. Right. It's just our default view at, at that point. I don't want to see it because I got just other things I need to see that are a lot more important. So that was, that was really all I had to cover on that. I mean, automated okay. actions, automated actions make my life just that much easier. And and there's so many different cool things you can do with, with uh, larger groups and priorities and, and colors and moving things and external actions and triggering emails. And there, there's just, there's a lot there that we just, don't use because we're, we're not, kind of bare bones when we, right. we come to really needing to keep track of our work. And this, this does that for us. 
Yeah, but we do our runners. We have runners out there. You know, if you need that automation, and that's where I thought you were going with this, we offer that customization and that whatever your team needs or whatever, you know, you as an individual may need, we're, we can help you getting these set up and, you know, get you in this kind of the same kind of workflow that we're in.